So how is it that we multiply 5 to the third times 5 to the seventh, we get 5 to the tenth? Add the exponents. Add the exponents. Now first, before we move on, someone explain to me, other than Connor, why do we add the exponents? Because I'll tell you what I hear a lot is, is I'll ask that question to somebody will be working on a problem and say, okay, so, so what are we going to multiply these two together? And they'll say 5 to the 21st. Okay? Now, what, why would they get 5 to the 21st? Because they do the time. Because they do 7 times 3, all right? So, so this is a, a steps-oriented person. I want to know the steps. I forgot, I forgot the, the thing, I forgot the rule, I forgot the step, right? But what we should work on is that we want to use the, the shortcut of 7 plus 3. We, in case we just forget, in case we get a little bit confused and we wonder if we have it right, if we ever ask ourselves, should we add the exponents or multiply them, we should be able to explain to ourselves real quickly uh, why we multiply or why we add them together. Okay, so can we come up with an explanation of why we add the exponents? Because if you uh, multiply them and stuff, they're going to get a way bigger number than we want to get. Like well, I mean, that's you're just saying if you if you multiply the exponents together, you'll be wrong. Yeah, because you have uh, like 20, uh, 21. What I'm asking is, can we can we come up with an explanation as to why five to the third times five to the seventh is five to the tenth, and not five to the twenty-first? Other than it's wrong. I mean, can you explain to me why I add the exponents? If you take 5 times 5, then 5, 3 times, and then you take 5 times 5, 7 times, 10. That's right. So 5 to the 3rd and 5 to the 7th, and you multiply them together, why is that 5 to the 10th? Because there's, five, or there's 10 5 seven. There's 10 fives. You're multiplying five, or 10 fives together. That's what this number means. It means how many factors of 5 you multiply together. Or you can see if you write it out. Not 21. Okay. If you wanted 21, we'd have to do 5 to the 3rd to the 7th, because then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 7 factors. And each one of those is filled with what? 5 to the 3rd, 3 fives. 5 times 5 times 5, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, on. so we have 7 groups of 5, 7 times 5. So if we have that explanation in our back pocket, ready for ourselves, then we never make that mistake anymore. We don't get the wrong exponent because we understand what that rule means. Okay. All right, so now that we have that rule, oh, if we multiply these two numbers together that have the same base, we can't add their exponents together. Okay. Um, we should get, what, 9 to the, first. to the first. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, and of course that's 9. Okay, um, so the thing that's happening here, we're seeing something interesting that happens in math sometimes. Sometimes things are the way they are because they have to be that way. Okay? Because I'm able to add these exponents together, I need to be, I need that rule to continue for fraction powers as well. I need to be able to add them up and have that rule be consistent. For it to be consistent, for me to, uh, to be able to add these together, if I multiply these together and I get 9, then what does this number have to be? 3. 3. Why does it have to be 3? Because 3, right, a number times exactly that same number needs to be 9. So that number, whatever 9 to the half is, has to be that number, which is 3. It's got to be. Uh, square root of 9. When we write the square root, we're really, the number that is assumed is right there, is a 2. Right? The square root is the second root. Um, so, if that's true, what's your guess as to what this would be? If, if what we just said is true. That 9 to the 1 half is 3. Oh, sorry, that's 63, 64.
I'm asking the whole room, what do you think? Four. Four. Okay. Why, why is that your guess? Okay, so because, you're saying because four times four times four is 64. So you're saying whatever this number is, it, you need to be able to multiply by itself three times to get 64. Yeah. Okay, can I ask you guys to like, verify that? Yeah, so can you, for, the, for anybody who might be skeptical or wonder why, like, because what you're saying is, again, I'm saying it a second time, Whatever this number is, I'm assuming that you have to multiply it by itself three times and get 64. Like I'm determining what that would have to become. Okay, so why why is that? What kind of explanation? Um, we came up if we like you said, if we add them all together and equals 64. You multiply them together, yeah. Um, 64. Then we would have to divide that by three to get the actual number that would come as the third of. 64 to the third. Do they're not divided by three. Not do the cube root. Cube root. That is what that's called. Um, um, I mean, that makes sense. It sounds kind of like you're saying that it's still like it still has to follow the same pattern. But can we? Can you convince me that this times this times this would have to be 64 to the first power? Examples up there is, is, is the exact same principle. It's just yep. adding a third to 64, another third to 64, and another third to 64. And one third plus one third plus one third uh -huh. is three. It's one. It's one. Three over three. It's one. Yeah. So if we believe that that rule is consistent, which we want to believe, then 64 to the one third times 64 to the one third is 64 to the two thirds times another 64 to the one third is 64 to the three thirds, which is 64 to the first. And now we have. A number times itself times itself needs to be 64. And just a little bit of investigation. That was a set. 4 is that number. So 64 to the 1 third is, as Gavin said, the cube root of 64, the third root of 64. Um, or, uh, should be able to take this number times itself four times, not two times, not three times, but four times, add up all those exponents to get 16 to the first. The only number that I can multiply by itself four times is two. Well, it must be two. 16 to the one fourth is equal to, how would you say that? Sixteen to the one fourth power. The fourth root of sixteen is two. And real quick, say the fourth root of sixteen. What are we looking for? Describe it in words. What, we're what number times itself four times is equal to sixteen? Exactly. Okay. So that's. Great, how about, um, let's see. So in your groups, I want you to decide what that 